के संग कभी बाबा के संग कभी मैया के संग कभी मैया के संग में अकेला मेरी मटकी में मार गयो अकेला कभी मैया के संग में अकेला मेरी मटकी में मार गयो अकेला ये नंद जी के लाला यल कभी मधु मंगल के संग में अकेला कभी बदती में मार गयो
so many people. Sometimes with Madhu Mangal, sometimes with Suval, sometimes at Radha Kund, sometimes at Shyam Kund, and today, some or other, at this place, at Sakri Khol, he is going to throw the stone and he will break the, and he is breaking the pitcher pot. What will be the result of it? Now Maharaj will tell. <laughs> jai Jai Shri Radhe Jai Jai Shri Radhe Jai Jai Shri बंसी बार अरे मतिरो के देल हमारी बनिया बंसी बार अरे मतिरो के देल हमारी कन्हैया बंसी बार अरे मतिरो के देल हमारी कन्हैया बंसी बार कन्हैया बंसी बार ओ यसुमत नंदी तुलाए 
शकरी खोर कहते हैं वेन वी हैव कम दिस इज कॉल्ड शकरी खोर बिटवीन गैलरी बिटवीन लेन बिटवीन टू माउंटेन वेरी नैरो पैसे यू गो एंड देन यू सी दिस इज विष्णु पर्वत दिस साइड एंड दैट इज ब्रह्म पर्वत I know that Brahma has done very hard austerity. Brahma ji ne बहुत कठोर तपस्या की जी कृपा करके आपकी लीलाएं हमारे ऊपर में हो विशेष करके श्रीमती जी के साथ में जो रास लीला हिंडोल लीला और जो मक्खन इत्यादि की चोरी इत्यादि की लीलाएं हमारे ऊपर में करें तो ठीक है तुम ब्रह्म पर्वत होकर के बरसाने में आओ यहाँ पर भी शुभान महाराज जी का घर है वहीं पर तुम ब्रह्म पर्वत बन करके आओ और वहीं पर श्रीमती जी के साथ में हमारी अत्यंत रहस्यपूर्ण प्रेममयी लीलाएं संपादित होंगी ऐसा ही हुआ इधर में ये विष्णु पर्वत कृष्ण के प्रतीक है काले देखो यहाँ पर काला और इधर में कैसा गोरा पर्वत दिस पर्वत इज लाइक गोल्ड कॉलर गोल्डन कॉलर एंड दिस Mountain is light black color. It denotes Krishna and it denotes Shrimati Radhika. In middle, there is a very narrow passage. A gully is in the middle. Jishi ko kaate hai Shakari ko. Shakari means very narrow. I think that it will be better that I will speak Hindi and he will speak. तो यहीं पर कृष्ण गोपियों से दान लेते थे कि तो या दान साधारण जगत का दान नहीं या प्रेम का आदान प्रदान था प्रेम का दान इसलिए कभी गोपियों के साथ में ललिता जी विशाखा जी के साथ में श्रीमती राधिका जी कभी आ रही थी कृष्ण ने उनका डगर रोक दिया मार्ग रोक दिया और उनसे दान मांगा उसमें रपट झपट हुई उनमें परस्पर हाथा हाथी रपट झपट होने के बाद में कृष्ण ने ऊपर चढ़कर के और ठेले से उनके हड्डिया में मक्खन की हड्डिया में ठेला मारा और वो टूट गया और गोपी मक्खन से या दूध से स्नान कर लिया पूरा और सखाल ताली बजाने लगे इधर में ललिता शक्ति जी ने कहा ये कृष्ण का रोज रोज की ये जो आदत है इसको दंड दे करके छुड़ानी चाहिए इसलिए सखियों से मिल करके उन्होंने कहा जो ऊपर में वन में हम लोग छिप जाए और ललिता जी भीषण बजाएंगी और साथ ही साथ में उनके इशारे पर हजारों गोपियां एक साथ आकर कृष्ण को और उनके चेले चपाटियों को दंड दे Maharaj is saying that this place has got two mountains. One is of Vishnu and one is of Brahma. This is golden and this is black. In between there is a very very narrow passage. And how much is it narrow we can realize when we will pass through it. Hardly one person can pass from that passage. And such narrow passage is called Khor. And Sankri means narrow. So this is called Sankri Khor. So, when Gopi used to pass from here with their pitcher on their head, and in that pitcher they were having uh, butter or sometimes matha and uh, milk and like this. So, Krishna will come and forcefully stop the passage. Dagar rog lete the. Dagar means passage. Rog lete the. Now you have heard the song, it also says that Gopis are saying, why are you stopping our passage? 
Rasta wrote that they say they will use to stop the uh, passage and will say that give me, give us tax. In Hindi, their world they are using it, dan. Dan does not mean tax, dan means charity. <coughs> As if the Krishna is biggest pandit and priest over here and he requires donation and charity from everyone. Forceful charity he used to ask for and gopis used to refuse for it and then there is hatha bhai Maharaj is saying there is hatha bhai just with hand lapat jhapat <coughs> so when gopis are not ready to give he will come at some distance put some pebbles and throw over uh, those pitchers pitchers will break and all the curd uh, milk yeah, buttermilk and uh, b butter will fall on Radharani and gopis. Once gopi had an assembly that Krishna disturbs us like this so much time we should give it, teach him a lesson. So we should take a revenge and te teach him a lesson. So what did they do? They planned with lakhs of lakhs gopis. They just uh, spread it all over this place in hiding manner and said that some gopis will pass from here with Radharani and Krishna will be very happy with his sakha that today Radharani is nearly alone and the moment he will come and will break the picture we will all come and catch him but how will they come? Lalita became the head leader of this whole uh, uh, gang leader of this uh, activity Leela. She will just give a whistle and the moment she will give whistles, all gopis will attack on Krishna and his friends. The same happened when Radharani with her friends, a few friends, not much. This is called baiting process. I think when we catch some birds, we throw some bait, V-A-I-T, they came as bait. And all the sakhas came and they, they forcefully tried to catch the pictures of Radharani and uh, other gopis. At that time, Lalita just gave a whistle and thousands of gopis, they came fastly and they caught each and every sakha of Krishna, gop of Krishna and they started giving gulcha on the cheeks of all those uh, sakhas. Gulcha means boxing? Punching. 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 Boxing is something different thing. Punching is punch, heavy punch. And all they, they took their shikha and they, they bind their shikha with the branches of trees. And all sakis then caught Krishna, you are the gang leader. You have to be taught the real lesson. And they brought a lehenga, a choli and a chunariya for him. They forcefully uh, put on Langa and choli and chunri and uh, some decoration on their face just like a very beautiful girl and then a very big picture on their head full of uh, buttermilk butter and then you just move from here and he was forced to move at that time some gopis uh, stood little distance and threw people on that picture and picture was broken and all yogurt fell on him and that was Abhishek of Krishna and God say Mother Day. All the gopis were clapping like this. Around John Tan. You do it again. Never do like this. Otherwise, again. Now they took a vow from Krishna and from his sakha that you give a promise that you will never do this thing. And Krishna was forced to give this promise that he will never do it. Promise like this. In, in, I don't know whether this is the thing in India, if someone has to give a uh, punishment, then he is asked to catch his ears. I don't know whether in Western countries this is a thing, but here, Toba Kanat, I will never do it, and he will catch his ear that I did, I did my mistake. And another extension, extension of the punishment. Vishaka said, Lalita has taken a bow and I will take a, a stamp on it. What is the stamp? You catch your ear and do put her sit and get up. Ten times. In Hindi it is called uthak bethak. Sit down, get up. Sit down, get up. Sit down, get up. You saw, you saw, you saw. You saw. You saw. Cow or buffalo will eat uh, but 
birth of any baby calf, then that grihastha brings so much milk or butter or ghee, and they give here. They distribute here. Yeah. And they offer here their milk, first milk of that cow or metal. They give here. Here you can see where Krishna kept his latia here to run away from hand, hands of gopi. And his pagadi gir gai. Unki pagadi gir gai. Aur uski chinn waha par hai. When Krishna, when gopi chased Krishna and Krishna ran from here, his stick fell down and his turban also fell down. So, this there is a symbolical, symbolical impression is over there. You can go now very carefully, otherwise you can fell down.
चित्रा जी का जन्म हुआ था चित्रा जी समस्त कलाओं में निपुण थे वे अत्यंत सुंदर चित्रकारी बनाते थे मानो अब केवल बोलना बाकी रह गया कितना सुंदर सांपों का मंत्र जानती थी पक्षियों की बोली समझती थी रसोई में एकदम एक्सपर्ट थे बड़ी कला भी घरों में जो चित्रकारियां होती हैं उसमें भी निपुण इसलिए जितनी ऐसी शक्तियां थी उनका ये हेट बनाया था चित्रा शक्ति उनके माता पिता यही पर पासी में रहते थे उन्हीं के घर में उनका जन्म हुआ था दिस प्लेस इज शिक्षाउ्राम After the name of Chitra Shakhi, the father and mother used to live in this village, Chiksauri, and we are in a very restricted family of both Chitra Shakhi, Yuba. Yuba is so much expert in all arts, especially in teacher. I think that Shamrani cannot See a particle of that situation. Once, जबकि एक समय की बात, राधा की बड़ी पीपल और बेच आई थी। Once तेरे में तिराज का बाल तो बड़ी। She told to all all सखी लड़का दिशा था। अपने शक्तियों से कहीं अब मैं प्राण धारण नहीं करूंगी अब तो अब मैं मरना ही चाहता हूँ मैं कहीं सरोवर में कुछ करके या तीसरा करके जैसे आप आपने कर लें I don't want to live my life I want at once why I got so much Sati Pratar Nath, I was yesterday, but now I am not here. I was Sati Pratar Nath, but today we have finished our work. That's why we have to die today. Why did it happen? The Lord has asked, what happened? Oh, I heard a true voice, very strange. And I kept heard to that. मैंने अपना डिवाइस उस बर्सी पर एक जगह भी दे दिया। सदा के लिए मैं बेच बेच दिया आपने जो सुंदर बंसी बजाया और उसकी बंसी की तांत सुन करके अब अपनी रही नहीं। इतने में किसी ने कृष्ण नाम सुनाया। कृष्ण नाम सुनते ही मैंने उस कृष्ण को अपना डिवाइस दे दिया। ये दूसरे और तीसरे ने एक चित्र दिखलाया तीसरा जी ने बहुत सुंदर फोटो चित्र दिखलाया और मैंने अपने कोशिश को सरेंडर कर दिया और हमारे तीन वो रह गए
cones. When we came first, about 54 years before it our Guruji, there was no pakka anything. Mayur Kuti was there where Krishna and Radhika danced in the form of peacocks. Also, here, lower down, there are so many groves. Anyone can hide in that. Srimati Radhika used to hide here and Krishna to search here and there. At last, by the single, single of signal of Chitra, Chitra or Vishakha, Krishna was uh, Krishna anyhow searched Srimati Radhika. So there are so many groups here, here and there. Upside you on this top of this hill is Bilas Gard. In very childhood, Srimati Radhika used to play with uh, dust, like homes, making homes like this. And sometimes Krishna used to meet there. Sometimes Radhika was playing with dust with all the Sakis. A storm came and all the dust began to Fly. 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 fly here and there. In the meantime, <laughs> everywhere it was like dark and anyhow Krishna came black and anyone could not see. <laughs> and he made their Srimati Radhika. So this is called Vilaskund. There are so many places, pastimes, sweet pastimes on Vilaskund. Here also we will see Dangar. This is called Vilaskund. Here is Mangar. Dan Mangar and at last we will go to Dangar. We will tell the story there, how it is became Dangar. We are now going to <coughs> Gavarban. All the Goswamis, <coughs> so many great rishis, used to come to this place and to do austerities here to have the mercy of Srimati Radhika Devi. Also, Krishna used to come and meet with Gopi. We will <coughs> narrate these histories upward. Go Pramanande. Mayur Kuti ka thoda sa bata. Govinda Jai Jai Gopal Jai Jai Govinda. हम लोग गवर्नमेंट की परिक्रमा करते हुए इस स्थान पर आए हैं अब राधा जी का मंदिर भी खूब अधिक दूर नहीं यहाँ से दान महल और दान महल से पार करके हम लोग श्रीमती जी के कुंज में या उनके मंदिर में हम लोग पहुंचे नाउ वी आर Coming to this place, this place is in Gahwarban. We have come to Morkoti. We have told about Vilaskund, Vilasgarh. We have told about Mangarh. This is a part of Man Mangarh, also you can see. <coughs> Srimati Radhika, anyhow, become so very. He had heard from his parrot, she parrot that Krishna has made with Chandravali and he was pacifying Chandravali. So hearing this she became so <coughs> sulky <coughs> and in anger mood. Absent. He promised, she promised, Krishna ye pratigya ki 
काले चीजों से अब हमारा कोई संबंध नहीं है आई हैव नो कनेक्शन विद एनी ब्लैक पर्सन आई विल नॉट टेक ए साड़ी धोती विच बॉर्डर इज ब्लैक आई हैव नो कनेक्शन विद एनी ब्लैक शी आल्सो कवर्ड हर ब्लैक हेयर विद व्हाइट क्लॉथ एनी हाउ she was not in emote to krishna se sandhi karne ke mood mein nahi thi she was not in emote to compromise with compromise with krishna <coughs> one day two days three days four days went on krishna became so puzzled and he wanted to meet with shrimati raji inner by inner she also wanted to meet krishna but out of worldly <laughs> by the fear of lalita she had no dare to meet with krishna because lalita had told dhurte prajanta tane tan srushta bamna don't be very easy for krishna be very crooked if krishna wants to meet you should be like this and you should go <laughs> so today she was has so very powerful man anyhow it was come not coming down then krishna was waiting she went in the sharan mein center center of the vishakha de vishakha de bhi told that you will have to do like this you can come with any very qualified mohini shyamla sham kar kya naam uska shama sakhi shama sakhi and then you can try so subal sakha made her made krishna a very beautiful kishori lady unhone usko saja diya उस समय में ऐसा मालूम पड़ता था जय राधिका के अतिरिक्त उनसे कोई ब्रज में सुंदरी नारी नहीं सिर्फ एक सो ब्यूटिफुल स्वीट लेडी इट वॉज नॉट लेस देन हर सब श्रीमती राधिका सिटुक सम फ्लावर्स एंड सिट ऑल दैट आई एम मालिनी श्यामा मालिनी daughter of a gardener she was so expert in making garlands she told that if i will give my garland to any man who is so very he is so tired any house then she will be out of tired everything will go and he will be so happy or she will be so happy they brought to shrimati radhika where she was feeling so much mad and anger <coughs> not eating drinking anything she that shyama sakhi malini oh how beautiful she is. and how she is expert she made a garland so in art that shrimati radhika was moved and she began to usko mane uske art ki prashansa karne lage then she shaka told oh she is very qualified in all art if she will touch you your all tiredness and all your anger man will go away oh i will see bring her so when she came and touch shrimati radhika by touching shrimati radhika i realized that oh she is not any malini arshama sakhi <laughs> she is shyam not shyama and he at once brought brought a click there usne uske mann mein radha ji ke mann mein kuch bhavna aayi 
made a plan. Plan three. <coughs> to glorify Shri Prabhupada <coughs> is not an easy thing to do. It says with material senses we cannot chant the holy name, see Krishna. We need spiritual transcendental senses. So I'm unqualified to properly glorify such a personality of Shri Prabhupada. The spiritual master, the pure devotee, is not one of this world. <coughs> he is a Gorda Priya Jana, a Radha Priya Saki, a dear girl companion from the spiritual world. <coughs> we say there's ten offenses to chanting of the holy name to get Chudanam. 
And if we cross beyond the nam abas, nam aparad, <coughs> these ten offenses, and we all repeated the ten offenses many times, and one might say, what is the <coughs> worst offense of the ten offenses? And usually we think to blaspheme, to blaspheme a guru or pure devotee is a serious, the most serious crime in the offenses, and it is. But because the spiritual master is an ocean of mercy, it is said that the ornament of the Vaishnav is his forgiveness. He can forgive us, but even a more severe offense is to consider the pure devotee an ordinary person. So Srila Prabhupada, it's not that he perfected his sadhana and he was a pure devotee. He is coming down from the spiritual world, like all our, our Guru Varg. His love for his spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Saranta Saraswati Thakur, knew no bounds. So his whole life was one, we say, one of preparation. But just like in Gaur Leela, everything Mahaprabhu did was, an, was a pastime in itself. So Srila Prabhupada's so-called difficult in household life, etc., was to teach us. There was no obstacle at all in his life. It was for our own learning because he is not one of this world. He has come down. He is a dear companion <coughs> of Srimati Radhika. Um, I've heard devotees say that Prabhupada was not of that character, and it's very sad to hear such things. Because if one actually does not understand that the pure devotee is coming down from the higher world, it's very hard difficult to make advancement. And to hear the Hare Kata from such a pure devotee is about our only hope. <laughs> really, what sadhana, at least for myself, what sadhana can we do? <clears throat> so, <clears throat> the only hope is to hear the pure Hare Kata from the lips of a pure devotee of such a caliber. <clears throat> <coughs> There's a story and you heard, but I'll, some of you might not have heard it, and I'll just say it again, that when Srila Prabhupada came, this was narrated to a, uh, to a god brother of mine, who someone told him, and Prabhupada told him confidence, that when he came over on the Jaladut, he had a couple heart attacks, and he said that he prayed to Krishna to, to relieve him of his pain. The Prabhupada told this devotee, it was Vishwambhara Goswami, father of Padmanabha Goswami, who told this devotee, told me. Prabhupada didn't want anyone to know this. He said, please don't tell anybody. But after Prabhupada left, this devotee couldn't keep it in his heart anymore, and he had to say that when Prabhupada had that heart attack, say Krishna personally came and massaged his chest. So, it was all a plan, Krishna's plan, in Saraswati Thakur's plan, Prabhupada was picked to do such a do such a mission. So these these dear dear associates <coughs> of of Krishna are very very rare. We sing every day, Shri Guru Charna Padma, that the lotus let the lotus grow in our hearts. And what is that lotus? It is the Bhakti Ras. Another another name for Rasa. There's many names for Rasa. One is water. So where does the lotus grow? The lotus grows in the water. So that lotus of love, that bhakti rasa, grows in the heart of the Vaishnava, of the aspiring devotee. And by hearing the Hare Kata from the lips of a pure devotee, one can advance further and further. In Kali Yuga, it's very difficult, especially for Westerners. It is said that Jagai and Madhai were so, were so fallen, but I can personally attest they were angels compared to myself. And I know that. So, so sometimes you see a spider and just, just a string. A string is hanging from a spider web. The only thing that I'm hanging on to is Prabhupada's mercy. I can't do proper sauna. I can't do proper anything. So I prayed to Prabhupada very much what to do. And it became very, very clear and evident to come to Srila Narayan Maharaj. Some things I can't really say now, but it's a very, very deep, deep feeling and very deep things came to me. 
a few years ago, when I, when I met Shri Narayan Maharaj, he said, never leave me and I'll never leave you. And that same feeling, when he used to look in Prabhupada's eyes and sit in front of Prabhupada, Prabhupada emanated that same feeling within one's heart. That he promised that if we continued our service to him and our love for him, he'll never leave us. <clears throat> and that same feeling, that same heartfelt feeling is there with Shua Guru Dev. <clears throat> so, uh, Shua Guru Dev asked how we came to Krishna consciousness, so called. I, in fact, I really haven't come yet. I'm just starting, trying to come. And so many things are being, being revealed more and more by Shua Guru Dev. But to make a long story short, in 1968, I went to uh, a festival. I used to call them Lovins. And the devotees were there chanting. And I, I saw they were quite unique. I never saw devotees before. I was quite young, very young at that time. And they handed me a card to come to a Sunday feast. And because that evening I was quite hungry, I went to the feast. And there I bought a the old purple Bhagavad Gita with picture of Prabhupada's picture of Prabhupada in the back. I looked at that picture and I thought it was what an amazing person this person is. So beautiful. And so for those four years I tried to read but I was quite young. So in 1971 <clears throat> I was going to college and a few friends uh, that you might know, uh, Triparari Swami and a few others were living in a house and Prabhupada came to Los Angeles for the first time, and we all drove down. It seemed like yesterday, actually. And we came to see Prabhupada, and that was it. Love at first sight. So, sometimes in a race, you see in a relay race, when someone is, is passing the baton to the next person, the race must go on. So I feel in my heart that Shiva Prabhupada wanted so much for us to, to proceed. And in his last days, he took Gurudev's hands, and he knew what he wanted. But he had to say it in a very certain way. And as that baton was being passed to the next runner, Prabhupada has lovingly passed on his heart and his mission to Shiva Gurudev. One last thing I want to say. <clears throat> that was kept quite, uh, very quiet in Prabhupada's last days. In 1977, in September, he was uh, in India and he was going to America. He wanted to see his disciples for the last time. The doctor told him, if he went to the West, he might get better. I happened to be in England then, and they asked me to guard Prabhupada's door. Upendra Prabhu <coughs> was Prabhupada's personal servant. And after a few days, Prabhupada got very, very sick. And so Upendra asked me, Dvenarath, come in the room and help me. I can't take care of Prabhupada myself. He can't get out of bed. So Prabhupada got worse and worse, so-called worse, by the day. And then he called the secretary in and said, we're going back. And the secretary said, where are we going? Prabhupada said, we're going back to Vrindavan. So uh, Prabhupada was only going to stay a week, but it ended up staying three and a half weeks. And Prabhupada got quite ill. And... Prabhupada's mood was very different. He wasn't speaking, he was very quiet. He, he had to wear glasses and we had to carry him in a little palanquin. And it was a very moving experience because he didn't have to say a word. And one day, we thought he was going to leave at that time, so we took him to the hospital. And it's not so good to talk about this, but it, it's a very, I think, an important point. It's, it's, been, it's, kept quiet, it's been kept quiet. So at the hospital, Prabhupada had a minor operation, and, but he didn't care if he lived. He was ready to leave right then, because he was always in Vrindavan. And he said, do whatever you like with me. So as they did the operation, I was watching the operation, and then the nurse took Prabhupada out of the room, and I helped her carry... The bed was quite big, and I helped her take the bed down the corridor, and I looked at Prabhupada, and his head was tilted back. I had to look down because Prabhupada was in physical, his, his physical pain was great. And I felt it was because of his, of his disciples like myself that couldn't carry on properly 
what he actually wanted. So, his dear friend and associate, eternal associate, Shua Gurudev, Prabhupada has heartfully, heartfully passed on his mission. The mission goes on in many ways, but when you have a magnifying glass, you might see certain things that are more prominent. And as Guru Dave says, we should never criticize. So let whatever others do, do. But we are following someone who's so sweet and dear to Shri Prabhupada that our fortune is so great. And I pray that Shri Guru Dave bless me that I can continue. Sripat Prajandanandan Prabhu should glorify his Guru Dev. Hare Krishna. Kama Om Vishnu Vidaya Krishna Prasaya Bhutale. Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nityananda. Namaste Sarasvati Devi Gauravani Pacharini Nirvasisa Sindhivari Pasitari Satari Dhamma Om Vishnu Vidaya Radhikaya Priyatmane Shri Srimad Bhakti Vedanta Narayana Nityana Vanshakalpita Rupascha Kripa Sindhu Vedacha Dita Nam Pavani Vira Vaishnavi Vira Nivana I have mixed feelings coming in front of everyone I'm in this association, feeling quite intimidated and unworthy. But at the same time, because of uh, the eternal debt I have to Srila Prabhupada, I want to say something to glorify my spiritual master. Um, not too long ago, I read something in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. It was a purport by His Divine Grace, and it was very timely for me. I had been praying oh, about two years ago for quite a long time because of my fallen condition to properly understand and appreciate Srila Prabhupada because I didn't. I, I am too, too much of a beginner in this life and very little adhikara. And praying and praying and praying for such a long time. And then Srila Gurudev comes to Badger, California, somewhere in the middle of nowhere and begins to explain uh, to us in a very deep way who our Srila Prabhupada is and what he wants from us. So without that, I wouldn't even attempt to begin to speak here tonight. But somehow or other, by the grace of Srila Prabhupada, I've been placed in the care of his dear friend, the Rasik Vaishnava Srila Gurudev, who is helping me to have some hope in this wretched life. This purport that I read shortly after Gurudev's arrival, uh, it was in the story of Shivananda Sain in the Anshya Leela of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And uh, Shivananda Sain had befriended this dog <laughs> on his travels. And by the grace of the association of Shivananda Sain, the dog then got the association of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and as Prabhupada explains, that dog went back to Godhead. And in this purport, Prabhupada spoke so beautifully. First, he, he commented that one has to become the dog of a Vaishnava. For about 40 years, I've had no trouble being a dog. <laughs> but to be a dog of a Vaishnava is no light thing. And Prabhupada's words were so powerful as he expresses that point there. And then he goes on to explain that his father, uh, Gaur Mohande, who was a pure devotee, <coughs> prayed that Srila Prabhupada would one day become the servant of the eternal consort of Lord Krishna. Uh, because Gurudev had been indicating the, the proper understanding of Rupanuga, being a Rupanuga Vaishnava, and there had been so much speculation about Srila Prabhupada, this and that. Reading that purport, 
was so reinforcing for me, as well as the Ikata, the Harikata that was coming from Srila Gurudev, that I began to see Prabhupada and Srila Gurudev working co-jointly in my life to lift me from what is Prabhupada called the Maya of material existence. And then Prabhupada went on to explain that, that we have to, even if one is wretched and fallen, if he gets the favor of a pure Rasik Vaishnava, then the same mercy can come to him as, as to someone who is very advanced in taking shelter of a pure devotee. So, knowing my own background, there seems to be some competition tonight as to who is the greatest dog. I don't know who was, but I know I was definitely in one of the uh, breeds. Now, Srila Prabhupada, I first saw him in 1968. I was a college student. He came to speak at my university. I, I was too fallen to come to the precincts of Krishna consciousness. But I never forgot. I had no idea that I was meeting my eternal divine master. But somehow or other, there was some respect and appreciation there. In the middle of this 60s a turmoil of uh, illicit sex, intoxication, very calmly he speaks to us and says, no illicit sex, no intoxication, no gambling. I knew there was some something of substance there, but I wasn't able to accommodate it fully in my heart. And then about two years later, when I became materially exhausted, all my aspirations for dog life were finished. I came to the temple, and I immediately joined, or stayed at the temple, lived. And I started following the four regulative principles, chanting 16 rounds. And after about six months, uh, I accepted Harinam from Srila Prabhupada. But my conditioning and my low nature was still manifesting. When it was time for reach, the reach for the beads, I reached with my left hand. Mm -hmm. And Srila Prabhupada pulled back. And with affection, but with like, who is this person, a little bit of that. Then he gave me the beads in my right hand. And then on another occasion, shortly after that, some reason he looked at me. I, I never had much association direct with Prabhupada. These were just a, a few moments. And for some reason he wanted a madunga at the kirtan. And I was so clumsy and adept. He just happened to look at me and he said, where's the madunga? And I immediately panicked and started shaking everybody in the temple. Where's the madunga? Where's the madunga? <laughs> And then, on another occasion, I went to Mayapur, and, and in the evening I was guarding Prabhupada's quarters. This is just to tell you what Prabhupada had to deal with, and yet how merciful he was. And it was in the evening, and Prabhupada had to go to the restroom. So I ran down in front of the bathroom, and I stood there with a stick like this, waiting for Prabhupada to come out with, with the stick. And Prabhupada walked out, and what is this? You are guarding? I said, yes, Prabhupada. Like that. And he just started laughing. And he looked up and he said, what is he guarding? Like this. So even though I was a fool and a wretch, somehow or other, I was allowed to engage in his service. And because he accepted that service, I never cared for anyone in my life before. But we... We distributed books, we lived in a van, we went out in the snow, we went out in the subways, car to car, in the, in the, in the, the blistering hot sun. But because Prabhupada said, distribute my books, we performed all these austerities, and, and we were happy. And little glimpses of Raj, as we would read the Krishna book at night, would manifest causelessly in our heart, just by our connection with him. No other reason, no other adhikar. As one of my friends once said, Srila Prabhupada, you are our only opulence. And I think that prayer, Gurudev, it says, uh, uh, your mercy is all that I am made of. So after some time, for whatever reason, uh, the fire of service waned. And pride, offenses, and artists came up. And again, Puna Musakabhav. So many years of, of torment and anxiety speculation, fear, and then as I mentioned, the prayers, please help me again to properly understand and serve Srila Prabhupada. 
and then Srila Gurudev arrived, and my life now has hope. Um, so I want to take this occasion uh, in Varshana, as Prabhupada said, somehow or other, he said in this purport, I become the eternal servant of the consort of Sri Krishna. So here in Varshana, in the association of another eternal servant of the consort of Sri Krishna, who has given me his shelter, and in the association of some of his pots without holes, I, with whatever little sincerity I have in my heart, want to beg you to please tolerate me, please accept me, and to please allow me to no longer be a dog, but to be the dog of a Vaishnava. They think that my Gurudev loves me much more. I heard from all the disciples of Prabhupada Sila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati all used to tell that he used to love me so much. Also, I have seen <coughs> our Gurudev. I used to know that Gurudev loves me more than anyone. But here we are so many, still, like Nikunja, like who? Uh, oh. Okay. Vaishnava Maharaj. Oh, they think that uh, he used to love them more, <laughs> more than me also. <laughs> he used to tell, oh, Nikunja Prabhu. <laughs> oh, so this formula also goes to Swamiji. Anyone who has come to him, came to him, whether he is disciple or not, especially if he is disciple of Swamiji, he must know that, uh, oh, he used to love me so much more than anyone. So he was, his specialty was like this. Everyone, he is a smiling face, hmm? even to a child, he will try to play with a child, a smile. And when he will be with very learned person, he will be very great. Like uh, the president of India then was very learned person, biggest Mayavadi, Ram Krishna, Radha Krishna, Dr. Radha Krishna. Then he used to be very great. Hmm? And cutting their all arguments, Maya Bhakti, in a very easy way. Easy. It was very easy for them. But I know this thing that uh, he wanted to mix with general persons. He went to colleges. They went to very big, big doctors and philosophers and all, but not so much. He wanted to mix with general person and to preach in a very general way, in a very simple way, all these things. That we are mortal, every very suffering, sorrow, birth and death, especially in old age, and we should try to Seven, the supreme personality of God is Krishna. We are Christian, he used to tell. We are Christian, but what, what Christian? Huh? Refined or what? Real Christian, huh? reformed or... <coughs> Real Christian. Hmm? So, uh, he used to tell uh, that uh, 
his office was in Bombay. His southern place is in Mayapur. And his eternal abode is in how he fixed all this. He just to tell that there is a lame person and another is blind person. We Indian lame person having eyes, a strong also, and Western they are blind, knowing nothing but in a spiritual age. So they are blind, but they have so much money and everything. वो इस चीज को कहा करते थे जब भारतवासी जो भक्त लोग हम लोग हैं यहाँ के लोग लंगड़े हैं वहाँ के लोग अंधे हैं दोनों मिलकर के हम चल सकते हैं We can walk helping each other blind person can carry and lame person can come on the shoulder and he will direct the way तो is it not True fact in all, मैंने संपूर्ण रूप में ये संपूर्ण रूप में नहीं है, जागतिक रूप में है। हाँ, तो भी वो ठीक है। भक्त जो होता है, वो लंगड़ा नहीं होता है। जो मुकुंद का भजन करता है, वो किसी कारणी नहीं होता, वो किसी चीज की कमी नहीं उसमें होती है। वो संपूर्ण रूप से पूर्ण होता है। The devotees are पूर्ण, so don't need not help anything, but for material world, for preaching, wealth is also somewhat necessary, but it is not so much essential. If our heart is true, sincere. And devoted to his Lord and his Guru Dev, and he is a very big, both Dutta Sankalpa, well determined. Then wealth and everything will come. So he was determined. He was fixed in his object. That is why he went to England, um, America, and very easily. Caught the hearts of all devotees. He made happy two hippies. Who were hippies? He made made them happy. Once he was telling that when he was in where New York on that tree and that park, and he began to he used to begin his movement. Only alone in that park, sitting there, on our karthal, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityana, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Shivas Adi Shivas. Closing his eyes, like Samadhi, and doing Kirtan. Who is here, not here, who is hearing, not hearing, no mind. Koi bhi parvane. और हिपी लोग वो सब जंत्र लेकर के एक तारा और क्या क्या लेकर के उनको घेर करके रखते हैं नित्य करते दे यूज टू डांस फैन ही यूज टू सिंग एंड दे यूज टू गिव हिम वाइन ओ वी आर वेरी हैप्पी सो यू शुड आल्सो टेक दिस ही डिड नॉट हेटेड देम and after some time, so many happy, very young personality boys and girls, they came and they take, took initiation and thus, in a very short time, everywhere in the world, he preached so much. So, unke shamand mein, baut kuch kana hai. I want to tell something more. And in the class here, after Arati, we will see it again.
you should, I am requesting all to come there. Just after Arti and Parikrama, we will sit there and we will hear so many uh, sincere and senior Vaishnavas. Hmm? I think there are so many and we will hear and also I will also try to tell so many things in connection, what were connection with me and how he attacked me and how I served him. I did not serve him, he took my service. So now one kirtan should be done and after that we will go to Arati and after just after Arati we should all come and then again we will glorify you. <laughs>